Hello everyone and welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I'm Renz and today we're going to define actual love. Where does this come from? Well, before I get started, I want to thank everybody who joined me on the Full Moon Chat. Thank you for joining me there on Facebook and YouTube and on the Zoom. Uh, going forward on the Full Moon, it will only be for our members, members on our YouTube page and, and people who also support through Patreon. But I thank everybody for being there. It was a great conversation. I believe that we learned a lot. We worked with each other. So go back and watch that video, uh, regardless of which version you look at. But no, future uh, Full Moon Chats will only be for members and those who are on Patreon. So I hope you guys go ahead and become a member, join this page, and also over on Patreon. So I thank you very much as we continue to develop our level of alchemy, become that master alchemist. But on this channel, we talk about the 360 degrees of life. And in lieu of that conversation, I had many people ask me questions about love since that live occurred. And one of the questions that stuck out the most is the question of, do I believe people experience true love? Do I believe people experience true love? Now, my first instinctive comment was that most people never actually experience true love. That most people will go their entire life not actually knowing what true love is. Now, we will experience love most people will experience some form of love but that love will always be wanting because it won't be true love and as a measuring stick for this we're going to use something out of the new testament out of the christian bible now as you guys know i am one to say that i believe that every religious document has levels of wisdom within them so we're going to use this level of wisdom because I believe it's one of the most common uh, frameworks of defining love. And I think it's appropriate when you define love. So out of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, most of you, some of you will know this or are familiar with it or heard it. But it says that love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It, love, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hope, always perseveres, love never fails. The reason why this became very poignant for me because my first instinctive thing was people don't experience true love, but people do experience love. But then I second that thought with the fact that I said that the problem that most of us have is that we believe that love conquers all, that love is all that you need, that love will overcome every situation that you may possibly have to deal with within a romantic relationship especially. I said that and then I thought about it and I believe that because at the moment I said that you know what fact of the matter is you need more than love you need compassion you need understanding you need communication you need uh, acceptance you need a soft heartedness you need as a man to lead by serving you need as a woman to support by submitting you need all these things and above all of that you need a will a desire to embody love so I said love and uh, love is not enough you need more than just love and we thought we I had the conversation and we understood that and then I went about my day this morning and I thought about that thing right I thought about it for like a couple of hours I went and picked up some supplies for my popcorn shop and thinking about it the whole time. I'm driving down I-20 to get back to my shop in Stone Mountain and I'm thinking about it and I realized that I was wrong. I was wrong. And so I looked up, I said, okay, I need a definition for love. So I went back and I found and I looked this up, you know, Corinthians. I'll say, okay, you know, I'm familiar with that. People know that. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me break it down based on that. So in doing so, 
I started thinking about it. And I read it again and I said that love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, love is not proud, love is, does not dishonor others, love does not, is not self-seeking, it is not really easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong, it love does not delight in evil but rejoices within the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, love preserves. Um, perseveres love never fails and as I thought about that and I thought about all the other things that I said that you must have I realized this love is all you need love does conquer all here's the problem most of us can define love in this way mentally but we don't know it emotionally we don't know it energetically we don't know it spiritually we don't know it financially we don't know it you know through sympathy or empathy we don't know it in the core of our being so love is something we know in our mind but is not something we demonstrate enough of to be able to claim that we will truly know love so that love can conquer all let me put it to you more definitively Love is patient. Now, in this one, well, let me go back. Let me start. Let me preface this. No one will be perfect in love. And you do not have to be perfect to know or embody love. But what you must do is outweigh the scale. You know, in the Egyptian book of the dead, when you go and Anubis leads you to the scales, your, your heart is weighed against a feather. We have to put this to a scale in much the same way. And as your heart is on the scale, Horus comes and he, I mean Thoth comes and, no Horus comes and he, Thoth is writing it down, but Horus comes and gives an account of your heart to lighten your heart. So in thinking of that, love is patient. We have to embody more of the things on this list than we go opposite of the things on this list. You have to be in a state where maybe one or two things, you see it must be minimal because one seed of doubt can destroy the whole thing. One seed of malcontent can destroy the whole thing. One of these, some of these are, are more damaging than others. And, and if they are allowed to live and breathe, then you, you are not embodying love. And I will break down a few of these for you. Maybe all, I don't know. It says that love is patient. <clears throat> Everybody wants this. Everybody wants you to be patient through their trauma, patient through their issues, patient through their past, everything that they have went through. Because we all were born with just this tremendous amount of love, but then we become scarred through life. We watched our parents who may or may, may not have shown love to one another. We watched cousins and siblings and who may or may have not shown love. We, we watched the television shows. Some showing love, others showing lust. Some showing uh, a, a romantic love, while others showing physically fighting love. We watch the the shows where the 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 woman she she's testing the man to see, do you love me enough that you will be patient and you will fight for me? But these fights are always through negative reinforcement. So we want people to be patient through our negative reinforcements instead of them being patient through our positive reinforcement. Instead of, the, instead of saying, let's have a calm discussion concerning this issue so that we can work through our situation. No, we'd rather fight and then I'm going to leave. And is he chasing me? Is he chasing me? Are you going to come after me? She left. Hmm. I'm tired of this, but I love her. So I will journey forth to bring her back into my arms. We've seen these kinds of shows and we, we think that that is love and it's not. It's not love and we think that is patience but it's not. You know, I, I've suffered through so much in my life and I was treated so wrong and, and, I, and, and I will, I, I, I know that I lash out at you but, you know, but have patience. 
I know that I don't provide the sexual life you desire, but have patience. I know I don't provide the financial life that you need, but have patience. I know I don't show you emotions because as a man, I've been shown that we should not show emotions and bury them deep, but have patience. We expect this because we've seen this so many times played out in movie after movie after movie, but then we see the Shakespearean, we see the Cosby shows, we see all these other movies, you know, Fools Rush In, where love just prevails through the patience of time. Love is patient. Is a patience while act while in action. It's not a patient while staying stuck. Patience is like when the Bible, the Christian Bible, the Torah, the Hebrew Bible talks about waiting, that you should wait for God. It's a, it, the word there means waiting while in action. It doesn't mean sitting still. Patience is not sitting still. Patience is you're actively moving forward, not staying stuck. Love is kind. Love is kind. It means that you, you, you don't you don't intentionally or unintentionally do things that you know will spark anger, that will spark discontent, that will create an issue, a problem. That love is kind is self-sacrificing. And love is kind says that I know what you desire. You desire peace. Let me give you peace. You desire romance. Let me give you romance. You desire stability. Let me give you stability. You desire security. Let me give you security. You desire fun. Let me give you fun. Love is kind. And love is not envious. Envy shows up in all your insecurities. If you are insecure... And if you got to put that man or woman on a leash, if you got to tell them, like I was saying in the cycle of abuse video, if you got to shut down their social media, cut these people out of their life, isolate the person, all because you are endlessly jealous and your insecurities make it where you don't want them to see people, talk to people, be around people. You're curbing their that correct charismatic personality, that fun loving people person personality that you claim you fell in love with. Now it's a problem. Now you find issues with it. The way that y'all met. You know, now you find an issue with the fact of that person being the person that you actually started liking and fell in love with. So, but now your envy is causing, your envy through your insecurities is causing issues. And love does not boast. Love does not say, this is mine. This is my house. This is my car. This is my clothes. This is my money. This is this is mine. This is mine. This is mine. Love does not say that I did this for you. I did that for you. I provided. I did and I did and I did. And what did you do? You I you I gave and you. Love does not boast. Love does not say that I have done so much for you. You owe me. The sun has shined on the earth for billions of years, but yet never asked the earth to say thank you. The water provides for the trees, but the tree, the water never asks the trees to say thank you. The trees provide oxygen. The plankton provide oxygen, but they have never asked us to say thank you. They just do what they are supposed to do. There's nothing to boast about. You're in the flow of nature. Love is not proud. Pride comes before the fall. We all have heard that at some point, sometime. Pride comes before the fall because when you're prideful, it's I'm right. I'm not wrong. I cannot admit that I'm wrong. I cannot apologize even though I know I'm wrong because I see apologies as weakness. Love is not proud. Love says that something is wrong. I did you wrong. I wronged you in some form or fashion. Let me apologize. And better than that, let me have remorse so that emotionally I feel the apology. And then beyond that, let me be repentant and not do it again. Let me stop doing it. Let me stop patience and waiting. Let me stop doing this because all I'm doing is creating more and more of a situation of negativity within our life. Love is not dishonor others character assassination. Why are you destroying someone's character? I'm going to go a little bit faster. Love is not self-seeking. Yes, you take care of yourself. You make sure that you're good to go. But you do not self-seek above to the point where it causes injury to the other person. Love is not easily angered. Love takes a beat. Love says that I feel wronged. 
Oh, I feel like this is not right. Or that is not right. I feel like you did this or you did that. I feel like you should have done this or you should have done that. Let me lash out upon you. Let me give you my anger. Let me give you my anger, but call it passion. Let me yell at you. Let me scream at you. Let me belittle you. And say that it's just an argument. We can't fight. Couples fight hard and then we come back and we love hard. Who in the hell wants that? Going back to my thought process on negative reinforcement when it comes to anger. I know of people who start arguments just so they can see if the person loved them. I know women, unfortunately, who says that if he don't beat me, then he doesn't love me. This negative reinforcement of love is not what we need. Let me ask you a question. In most situations, do, does negative reinforcement, is that what they tell you to do to raise a child? Negative reinforcement, and I understand in some instances we do it. But in... Um, when you're, I know a guy that I went to high school with, he trains dogs. And positive reinforcement is how he trains the dogs, right? Negative reinforcements never gets you there. As a personal trainer, it always befuddled me by how um, the majority of people who came to see me never came because they said, you know what, I'm healthy and I want to stay healthy and I want to have a long life and I want to have good movement and good flexibility and I want to have good energy in my entire life. So that's why I came to you. No. I came to you because I found out that my A1C level is high. I came to you because I found that I have diabetes. I came to you because uh, my, I have hypertension now. I came to you because I saw that my mother died from being obese. I saw that my father had cancer, colon cancer, and became obese. I'm switching my life. I'm changing gears. I'm shifting. Not because I know I should do it for my betterment. I'm shifting because I felt enough pain to change. There are three areas in life where we wait for negative impacts before we make a change. That change, and see I'm speaking passionately without being angered, that's passion speaking. <laughs> that change come in our finances, in our health, and in our romantic life. Why must we go through pain? Do you know how many people I've seen they were in a great, amazing relationship. They were messing it up, messing up, messing up. And then when the relationship dissolved and they finally took accountability for it, they saw what they did and then they made the change. But they lost that great love that they had. How many people have it went bankrupt and homeless before they stopped robbing Peter to pay Paul? How many times do someone have to die in your family from obesity or from some disease or issue that could have been changed simply by exercising and eating better before you change your life? How many times must negativity impact you in order for you to make a great change in your life? It's happened to me. It's happened to me. There have been times where... Um, I have said that, you know what, I got to change this because I don't want to feel this pain ever again. And, and that happened to me. That happened. That happened to me. Where I don't want to feel a certain amount of pain, so I changed my life. I had to do something different. So I changed it. But most of the time, I've looked up, looked up and I said, you know what, I want to do this. I'm willing to put forth the energy and the effort to do this because I want this greater life. I... My kids have not suffered, so it is not my kids suffering financially that may, drives me to provide better finances for them than I ever had and better opportunity than I ever had. It is simply the desire because I know life will be better for my children if I provide them better opportunities, especially now that they're adults. My life path is different. And the thing about it is before, yes, I knew they were well taken care of, so I took greater risk than I would have if they were in my household. I could take a risk that could leave me where I'm couch surfing or I'm living in my car. I could take that risk when it's only me and I'm still take, making sure they're taken care of financially. But when they're, if they were living with me, if my son had came and lived with me when he was 12, there are many decisions that I made I would not have made be simply because not waiting for death to happen before I make that change. So let's stop changing our lives simply because negative reinforcement happened and that easily angered is a situation where we will allow ourselves to easily be angered, easily be frustrated, easily be dis discontented with our mate simply because we have this desire, we, we have this mindset that until things get so bad, they're not so bad. But things should never have to get that bad in order for you to change it. It keeps no records of wrong. We always say for, forgive and forget. 
And that's a true thing. We should forgive and forget. But most people say forgive but not forget. I got to remember. I got to make sure. You forget when the person has repented. If the person has shown you that they've repented, forget it. Let it go. Quit keeping account of it. I myself have kept account of things, but when I keep account of things, it is most often to prove a point. If I'm having a discussion with someone and I'm telling them that, hey, this is how many times we argue every month. And they're saying, no, 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 no. And remember, love rejoices within the truth and love always trusts. If love rejoices within the truth, but a person keeps saying that, no, 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 that's not true, then I will keep account of things just so that we can come to a point and say, okay, here's the factual truth. Now, are we, you going to show the love and accept that this is the truth? If you've been spending more money than you earn or you've been spending money frivolously and then I start tracking where you spend your money, then I am merely showing you the truth. If you are in love with me, then you will rejoice in the truth. Plain and simple. But if you do not rejoice in that truth, if you fight that truth with easily being angered, then guess what? Maybe you don't love as much as you think. Or maybe you're not in love. And let me backtrack to the easily angered. I will say this. A person can display just the easily angered part that turns violent. Not love at all. People will say that Ike did love Tina. Did he? Did he? If you love somebody, if you're easily angered and it turns violent, then you're not kind. <laughs> not kind you're dishonoring them you're self-seeking you are delighting in evil you, <laughs> they can't trust you you don't trust them your insecurities is part of the reason why you're violent uh, it kind of destroys the whole list so if you think about it a person do, does a person love here's what, what my conclusion was we all know love in our mind but we don't embody love Hence, the majority of us will never truly experience love. We've been programmed through culture, through society, through our own experiences to not be able to recognize true love within ourselves so that we can be able to give it to someone else. And until we recognize true love within ourselves, can treat ourselves in this format, can stab this as our measuring, as our, uh, our system of measurement, then we will never know it within ourselves. And until we know it within ourselves, we can't give it to anybody else. We easily, most of the time, give it to a small infant baby because we know that infant baby can't do anything to hurt us. We know that. But as a person grows older and older, if we give them that love, then they can hurt us. And that fear causes us to retract our love and not give it out. If you want to experience true love, you have to start being true love. That means you have to be open. Open. If you're open to true love, you have to be open to true pain. And you have to say that if I give this much love, then I can receive that much pain. It's a scary ass thing. It scared me. It scared me before. But you have to be open to that. And the reason why I started rewriting my book, How to Find Your Divine Soulmate, is because in order, when you are there, when you are there and you're with that person and you are there, there's the law of polarization that says that although you are open to the greatest amount of pain because you're open to the greatest amount of love, you understand how to polarize so that you stay in this space of the greatest amount of love. And anytime it starts to shift because the law of rhythm will shift, the law of change will shift it, you know how to raise that vibration and get it back. How to change your mentality and get it back. How to move in the way of as above, so below and get it back. That the law of gender, the birth of all creation starts with male and female energy and you move it back. And you say, what's the cause and effect of this migration to the left? Let's get the cause and effect of getting it back with the law of change and everything else included. That's how we are open that's how we get to true love by being open to it but let's do it smartly let's do it with a smart heart a smart mind a smart gut where our instincts come from and let's do it smart in our sexual sexuality as well let's not go after lust what looks good what smells good what feels good but let's do it in the most intimate measure the most intimate intimate way 
So that question was a great question. I still don't think that most of us will ever experience true love because most of us will never be open to it. Most of us have love in our mind and we think that we know what it is and we give it. Most of us will look at this list and we will lie to ourselves and say that I'm, I'm patient, I'm kind, I'm envious. I'm not envious, I'm not boastful, I'm not prideful. We will say that I'm not most of these things. And for the ones that we are, we would blame another person or a past trauma as to why we're not and the fact that I'm just keeping myself safe because I don't want to feel that again. And if that's the case, then your love level is here so that your pain level can only be here. And you're always going to have a problem with somebody who desires to have love here, but is open to pain over here. So I hope this has been inspirational for you guys. Please continue to join the channel, subscribe to the channel, like, hit the thumbs up button as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Let's get to 10,000 members by October 15th, my birthday of 2021. And let's keep growing from there. Y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable.